So, you're interested in working in telepsychiatry. You've heard so many good things about it and you're ready to jump right in. But, you never hear the other side of it. And there's certain things that you should consider whether or not if telepsychiatry is right for you. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you my five reasons on things that you should consider if you want to work in telepsychiatry. So stay tuned. Welcome back, Psych Dude family. It's good seeing each and every one of you guys today. So before we get started on the topic of whether or not telepsychiatry is right for you, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give my video a big thumbs up, comment down below what your favorite part of working in psychiatry or what your favorite part you think you're going to like in working in psychiatry, and follow me on Instagram at the Psych Dude. So yeah, telepsychiatry isn't for everyone, and I know some providers that worked in te telepsychiatry and hated it, and I know some providers that work in telepsychiatry currently and absolutely love it. And honestly, it just depends on you. There are different things you definitely have to consider. I know I mentioned on five benefits of working in telepsychiatry, but I never actually went over five things that you should consider if you want to work in telepsychiatry. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you five things that you should consider if you want to work in telepsychiatry. So let's get started. So the first thing you should consider is there can be a lot of times where you'll experience technical difficulties. And the downside of having technical difficulties is if it happens, it can put you way behind. So say for example, you have patients scheduled every 30 minutes and you're needing to see them every 30 minutes. If you're having technical difficulties with one patient and they're already waiting for you and it takes you 20 minutes to figure out how to fix the issue, then you're going to be put behind 20 minutes. Pretty much the whole day, it's going to be, be, you're going to be behind and it happens often. And the reason being is because you're in one location and the patient is in another location. I'm not sure how it is for other providers. Um, with my clinic, what they do is they actually go into a clinic and they're able to get their vital signs and then staff members help them out. Um, I'm lucky enough because I have that access. Some other providers don't have the ability. They actually just see the patient um, from either their patient's computer or the patient's phone. So yeah, it's definitely something you have to consider because te technical difficulties are gonna be a problem. And sometimes you can't help it and it just happens out of nowhere and you have to deal with it. So be prepared if you do wanna work in telepsychiatry that te technical difficulties will arise and then you may be at a you may be at a standstill and not being able to see patients and just having to be behind all day long and that can be stressful especially if you're a newer provider with a, about a year experience and you're not going to necessarily know how to handle certain situations where everyone's behind and starting to become frustrated and get agitated irritated and they're pretty much going to take it out on you and you have to be able to provide them that allotment of time for them because they need to go through the process and being able to assess them properly to see if the medication is working or not. So yeah, like I said, definitely take that into consideration. And the second thing you should consider before starting telepsych is you might have limited opportunities to collaborate with other providers, meaning you're not going to be able to have all of the accessibility to collaborate with therapists, social workers, mental health workers, or even other psychiatrists or psych NPs. You're not going to have that ability because if the other providers actually are doing telepsych also, it's going to be harder for you to talk about a patient to them and you don't necessarily know their schedule and you're going to be given limited opportunities to actually do so unless they come to your screen and if they come to your screen unless they're busy and that puts us at a disadvantage the reason being is because if we want a disposition to another provider or a mental health worker or um, to another social worker and we're not able to do that and it's going to be a lot harder to actually gain that accessibility yes you can email them 
and but there's always going to be a longer turnaround instead of going to their office and being able to talk about patients or being able to schedule time with the provider because yeah it's you're not given all of that opportunity as opposed to working in a community mental health center where you have that opportunity just to either walk up to their office schedule that time or collaborate with multiple providers and seeing what the best plan of action is for that patient so that's something to consider is you're not going to have as much opportunity to collaborate with other providers so the third thing that you should consider is you're going to have limited accessibility to see abnormal movements and if you don't necessarily understand what that means is so when we provide uh, or prescribe antipsychotics we have to assess for side effects of the medication and we have to be able to treat those side effects so the biggest one is abnormal movement because you want to make sure they're not having EPS and the biggest thing is to be able to assess if they're having abnormal movements due to the side effects of an antipsychotic. So what we do is uh, an AIMS exam. So typically when you're in the office, you're going to be able to perform an AIMS exam. And during that exam, we'll be able to assess and make sure that they're not having any abnormal movements. But in telepsych, it's really hard to do that, especially when you don't have someone guiding them through the process. Luckily for me, I have an opportunity to do that because we do have nurses there and they're able to perform the AIMS exam for us. But in other areas and other uh, telepsych companies, you might not have that. And it's extremely important that you have to have that ability to assess AIMS. And if you can't, it puts you at a disadvantage and it's something that you have to consider because it's huge especially if you're prescribing antipsychotics so take that into consideration so the fourth thing you should consider prior to working in telepsychiatry is the rapport you build is gonna be different meaning you're not gonna be able to observe behaviors you're not gonna be able to build that rapport as you are when you are talking to someone in person. The only reason is because there is a barrier. So that barrier is you're talking to a TV and they're talking to a TV screen. And sometimes there is that downfall and you have to go above and beyond to try to decrease that ability or decrease the ability to feel foreign to them. So you have to try to relate but sometimes you're not able to especially to the certain extent that you want to and the only reason is because you're talking to a TV screen and yes there's a person across from the TV screen but it's different it's you don't necessarily have that human connection there as talking to someone that's in front of you so definitely you have to take that into consideration and I feel this is a huge one because the whole point of our job or somewhat of our job is to be able to build that trust, that rapport, and to be able to see their emotions, see their behaviors and to a full extent. And it's the reason why a lot of new grads aren't really put into the situation is because they have to be able to observe this and have to be able to build that connection with someone and establish and being able to assess properly in person prior to them doing this in telepsychiatry. So I feel like this is a huge disadvantage at times, but at the same time, it's needed because sometimes they don't have these resources available to the patient, so this is their last resort. So the fifth and final thing you should consider prior to working in telepsychiatry is, it goes hand in hand with number four is, you might be going way faster than you think you'll be going and if you feel like you want to be able to spend as much time with the patient and to be able to build that rapport and to build that emotional connection it's going to be limited and the reason why you're going faster than normal is because that rapport isn't as built compared to someone you're talking in person and like with number four is you're talking to the screen so all the things that you necessarily have to check off and what you want to assess for when doing a follow-up or doing an initial psychiatric evaluation 
you want to be able to ask those questions. And since you don't necessarily have certain things you have to talk about or building a rapport, a lot of it can seem robotic and you're just going extremely fast. And that sometimes can be something daunting to someone because they have if they love that connection, they love the human connection and they feel like they want to spend time with the patient, sometimes you go really fast and that's something you have to consider. And yes, you want to build as much rapport and yes, you want to build as much of a connection and ability to give that type of care. Sometimes it's not going to be there because like I said, the connection amongst the two is a little bit different because you're talking to a TV screen or a computer screen and you're just going through, not necessarily the motions, but you're just going throughout all the steps that you need to. Especially as a provider, you have to hit certain steps and you want to ask certain questions to decide, assess the best of the abilities, whether or not you're providing the best care. But as you're going through all of those things, normally when you're talking to them in person, you find things that you can relate with but in when talking to a TV screen it's harder to find things that you can relate with or build that connection so you're just going through it really fast and you have to be able to determine if that's right for you and for me at the moment it's appropriate I try to see which certain things that we can talk about uh, certain things we want to work on but other moments with certain patients that connection isn't necessarily there and then that's where things go by really fast to the point where uh, at times patients will just be seen for instead of normally your whole allotment of time only for 25 minutes of the 30 minutes things like that or 20 minutes of the 30 minutes but I definitely do my best to try to see the patient as long as possible just to provide that supportive care and the supportive um, types of therapy things like that but yeah, those are the five things that you definitely have to consider when working in telepsychiatry or prior to you working in telepsychiatry. And they are certain things that are tougher or more tough than others. Um, but at the same time, it's whether or not you're willing to do it and whether, whether or not you're willing to actually provide that care because these patients definitely do need help, especially in certain rural areas where care or support or Healthcare, mental health care isn't necessarily there and you're the pretty much their last resort. Um, if you're considering it, then definitely uh, take these five things into consideration. And if these things don't necessarily deter you, then definitely by all means pursue telehealth and telepsych. Yeah, that's pretty much all I got. As always, have a wonderful day and please comment down below on other videos that you would like to see. And also, like what I asked in the beginning of this video, comment down below what you would want to do in psychiatry or what you're looking forward to when working telepsych or in psychiatry. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.